Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here again. In today's video, we're going to be doing a Let's Refurb on a Game Boy Pocket from Japan for you. So today's video is going to be slightly different to some of the other ones we've done. We've done lots of these Game Boy Pockets from Japan for you in the past, and I usually do the DMG style Game Boy Pocket. Uh, so I put out a little post, my community post, um, if you subscribe with notifications on, you'll be able to get notified when I write a little post, um, about a Game Boy Pocket that someone on my Facebook page advised me of, and uh, I decided to get it. I thought it'd be a nice little challenge for me on the channel. It was about um, just under 20 pounds or 20 dollars, I think. I'll put the price up on the screen. Um, and it said it didn't work. Um, it's got the usual problem with the LCD screen. Oh my goodness me. So this was actually a gold Game Boy Pocket. But as you can see, I don't know what's happened, but whatever's happened, it's uh, covered it's, it seems to have, the paint is just completely rubbed off. So let's go ahead and pop the batteries in the back. I am mixing batteries because I enjoy living life on the edge. I can already see that there's a little bit of um, corrosion on the actual battery terminal on the inside there, which is never an ideal sign, but we should be able to uh, get past that. I'm just gonna try and scrape away some of it that's on the uh, inside of this one. Okay, so we are not getting a single thing out of this. I'm trying to turn the contrast, contrast wheel up and down, but nothing at all. Power switch is being wiggled. It hasn't got a power indicator because it's the one which doesn't have that yet. This was the slightly earlier model that was released. The screen lens is in really, really good condition, which is nice. We'll definitely be reusing that. So what we're going to be doing is taking this apart. I'm going to uh, fix the board and I'm also going to fix the screen. And then I'm going to paint the shell, which I'm really, really excited about. I've also bulk ordered a bunch of um, replacement polarizer films. Now I'll leave a link to these in the description below. I permanently get asked where to buy polarizer films from. I think I paid about four pounds for 10 and 10 will do 10 screens. Unfortunately, it's not quite long enough to do double. So without a doubt, the first thing to do is take it apart. This is nothing that we are not used to already. It's just gonna be a tri-wing screwdriver and six screws around the outside of the Game Boy shell. And then we can just go ahead and pop the back off. Slightly resistant here to be coming off which is a bit strange. Oh, goodness me. Okay, right, we're in. And it doesn't look like the corrosion has spread too far, which is really, really nice to know. To take it apart even more, we just need to remove three Phillips head screws, which is situated at the bottom. Removing the ribbon cable is very simple. Just lift up the two little white uh, cam locks there and wiggle it off. Turn it over and we're not dealing with too much corrosion, but I can see that it has seeped around the start and select, which might mean we have some problems with the start and select. So we may have to replace this board, to be honest with you, because yeah, it's actually gotten under some of the uh, traces and has slightly lifted up, especially around the start and select. So what are we left with then? We've got the, uh, the different contacts. They're definitely gonna need a clean, but that's a really, really nice, easy thing for us to fix. So that's no problem at all. We've also got the, uh, the D-pads, which isn't in bad condition. This thing seems to have just been in the wrong place at the wrong time and somehow got discolored. I have no idea how that's managed to have happened, but everything is actually in really good condition. You can usually tell by looking at the sides of the buttons um, to see if there's a lot of wear, and there definitely isn't on that. So I'm really happy with that. Uh, all looking quite positive so far. And then we will just need the screen to come out, which is quite an easy removal. Just be very, very careful gently twisting the, uh, the shell and it will wiggle off. Um, you might need to just get your thumbnail underneath one corner and then open it up like a book. There's a little um, adhesive. So there's a couple more things for us to remove before we can do any sort of painting to this or uh, cleaning because before we do spray paint this, we're gonna need to thoroughly clean it 
in the sink with some nice hot soapy water. It actually looks like there's some damp on the inside of this um, shield here, which could indicate why there's corrosion. You can definitely see if I rub my finger across it, that there's something in there. And one more thing to remove, and that's the little battery contact inside the bottom of the shell. Just get a little flathead screwdriver in there and push it up and it will come out nicely. Set that to one side, and here we are, a family shot of everything that's left. Uh, the screen hopefully isn't gonna have any lines on it, although that's not something that we can test yet until it's been repaired. So we're gonna do that. We're also going to um, spray paint the shell and then we'll reassemble it and have ourselves a nice working gold Game Boy Pocket. So what we need to do now is remove the front polarizing film from the LCD screen, which as you can see here, is very badly burnt. So what you need to do is take the uh, a razor blade or something um, incredibly flat and sharp, so pretty much a razor blade and you basically want to take the uh, lift the front polarizer film off what's happened somehow and it's not really entirely clear why is it has burnt so you need to be really careful when doing this because these screens are super fragile and there's ribbon cables all over so it's quite hard to actually get a good grasp onto it and we're going to remove it so it's going to be very difficult to do this without leaving some of the uh, the residue behind but just do your best to get as much off as possible and, um, and then we're gonna clean that up afterwards with some isopropyl alcohol. But what we're gonna do first is actually test to see whether or not the screen works. So what I've got with me here is a couple of components that we're gonna be using um, to try and get this thing working again. So this is the back of a pretty beat up um, Game Boy Pocket shell, but the sticker is a European sticker and the um, battery contact, oh, there's no battery contacts in there. So let's just slot that in there like so. Grab our batteries. Okay, there isn't a single bit of damage to this, which is absolutely excellent. You can see that there. It's uh, a nice working screen. Um, it looks great. The contrast wheel works fantastic on this motherboard as well. So now what we need to do is just take off all of that um, nasty glue that's on the top there. To do this, I'm gonna be using a microfiber cloth just because it's a, a nice smooth cloth to, uh, to put this on as we do the work. We'll start off with some isopropyl alcohol. This is 99.5%, so it's really, really strong. These Q-tips uh, you can get from a chemist or a pharmacy um, and, or a drugstore, I think is what they call it in the US. And um, yeah, the isopropyl will basically, hopefully, um, eat up the adhesive um, of this screen. I managed to get all of the, uh, the front adhesive off and I didn't scratch the screen in the process and it looks pretty good. I'm super happy with how that has turned out. So the next thing for us to do then is remove the sticker that is on the back of this shell because I really would like to use it. It looks in really good condition, so I think that's what we're gonna do. So to do this, I'm just gonna use a hairdryer, nothing fancy, hopefully stuff that you all have in your house. Unfortunately, the ones that came on the original Game Boy Pocket that I'm refurbing today were pretty damaged beyond repair. I managed to get this one off okay. Uh, I've damaged the corners slightly, but that's not a big deal. So pretty happy with how that's come out in general. And so the final thing for us to do is reassemble everything. So I thought we'd start off by just cutting the polarizer film. Um, you can just stick what's left of the, um, the burnt one on top of the new ones that we've just bought and just cut it across at the bottom I'm not sure how polarizer films cut. This is the first time I think I've done one. Seems to be okay. And there we go, we've now got ourselves a nice little replacement polarizer film. So now for the moment that you've probably all been waiting for, the shell reveal. And here it is. Boom. It is the same shell. I don't really know how I can prove it to you. The only way I think I can prove that this is the same shell is if you look where the, um, the kind of paint was left from the uh, shell in the first place, it matches up with the back of this one. 
You can also tell that it's hand painted because the A and B in start and select are missing. I don't really know why I'd need to prove myself to you that this is the exact same one, but you're just gonna have to take my word for it. It came out looking bloody brilliant. I also decided, which is the first time I've tried this, to paint it with the battery cover on, which means that we've actually still got the, um, the kind of original color underneath. So it looks as original as possible, although I do need to give it a little clean. I'm super, super happy with how it turned out. The coat of paint looks absolutely great, and I've accidentally like scratched it with my nail and it hasn't peeled off. We can also now stick our replacement sticker now on the back. Hopefully it's still gonna have enough adhesive left on there to last for a while. Okay, and the number as well. Make sure it goes on the right way. Wipe down to press it down into all of the corners. And that looks blooming good. It looks like a brand new shell. Oh my goodness me, I'm so happy with that. Okay, and we need to now just slot this on the back. and we'll close it up. We can pop our batteries into the back now as well and slide our newly painted battery cover on. And uh, this is looking excellent. Okay, I just heard it turn on there. But let's put the uh, screen protector back on again. It still has a little bit of adhesive from, um, from when we took it off. So that should be okay. Give it a nice little wipe. I'll probably order a, um, a glass one or something to finish this off really nicely. And slot that on and oh my goodness me this is definitely the favorite game my most favorite repair that i've ever done on this channel look at that what better game to bless this with than a newly refurbished um, game boy cartridge that i've uh, done a let's refurb on and we'll slot it into the back of our pretty much brand new looking game boy pop that in right there and let's turn it on speaker seems to work great Look at that. It almost looks like a completely different Game Boy. But I can reassure you, it's 100% the one that I've just done a Let's Refurb on. I'm so happy with how that's turned out. The screen looks a little bit greener than the original Game Boy Pocket, um, and that's just down to the polarizer film that I've used. And there we go, we're off in the world of Pokemon. Super happy with how this has turned out. It looks absolutely excellent and uh, I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. I think this Game Boy now looks absolutely immaculate. Um, I could probably do with putting actual replacement stickers on the back here because um, these ones, now that I've peeled them up, haven't you know held on great. But it looks pretty good and they're official. Um, I've really, really enjoyed this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.